Okay. Hey guys, so I put an egg in some vinegar. We've left it overnight. Time to take it out and see what's happened. As you can see, it's bubbling like crazy. Um, anyway, let's have a go. Ooh. It's gross. Right, let's try it. Rub some of this egg sh leftover eggshell off. So cool. Um, so here we have an egg that is very squishy and powdery. There's still bits of the eggshell still um, reacting with the vinegar. But if you watch, I can bounce it and it shouldn't, it shouldn't, emphasis on shouldn't, what's the word? Crack, break, break. shouldn't break. Woo! Isn't that exciting? See how we do like a tent? Oh! oh still living. Oh wait, should I be pointing? Oh. <laughs> so as we can see, this is just all that's left. Um, all the calcium carbonate on the egg, which gives it that hard property, has dissolved and worn away after reacting with the acid in the vinegar, and we're just left with that thin membrane, which is very gross. There you go, you have a bouncy egg. Hey guys, um, I'm about to do an experiment which involves sodium hydroxide, which is a very strong base, and hydrochloric acid, which is also a pretty strong acid, and this one's quite concentrated. So I'm going to mix them together in this bottle, and there's going to be a very violent reaction that will probably produce a lot of heat, and the end result should be just salt water. Okay, these pellets are good because they're just nice and small which gives it a larger surface area, which means that the reaction will happen faster. Now I'm wearing safety glasses because this could be a little bit dangerous, but it's all right because I'm wearing a lab coat and safety glasses. So as you can see, the heat has melted the bottle pretty severely and um, there's a bit of a solution going on in there don't know why it's that milky colour, might have something to do with a bit of um, soft drink left over in there and also the sodium hydroxide we used is only 98% pure so there are some impurities in there which could have caused that. It's also letting off like an acrid smell, it's like quite burnt and bitter yeah. so that again could have to do and with the bottle. It's, it's really hot to touch, I haven't actually felt it because I've got these good gloves on but um it's oh, quite hot. Really yeah. <laughs> this is going to be maybe a little bit more violent, so everyone prepared. Oh my god. Okay. There we go. What happened to you at the end? The boiling is actually the acid that hasn't reacted yet, um, which it's still doing because it's like bubbling away. And um, it's because there's so much heat there. <coughs> I don't know what gas that is that's it's letting off, but I'll be able to find out later. So I'll tell you when I see you all in class. Carbon dioxide. It's carbon dioxide according to Alex, but it smells pretty bad. So I think there might be something else in there. <laughs> So here in this jar we have um, just marble and here we've got hydrochloric acid. So, so I'm going to tip some of the acid into the jar and it's going to cause a reaction with the marble. It's going to start to bubble because it's going to corrode the marble. And we could not have done that before. Marble is made out of calcium carbonate which acts as the base which we are reacting with the hydrochloric acid. And as you can see, it's all bubbly, and that's because it's releasing carbon dioxide. What I've got here in this saucepan is a seashell and a tooth out of a sheep's skull, 
I've got them sitting in vinegar, which is also known as acetic acid, and um, both seashells and teeth are made up partly of calcium carbonate. So what we've got going on here is an acid-base reaction. As you can see, the seashell is reacting really quickly with the vinegar, and this is just ordinary household vinegar. The tooth is taking a little longer, might have something to do with the enamel, I'm not too sure, but we'll check back on it in a few days.